HP. <risos> This jackass. This is, a, this is a jackass. It's a jackal. It's, it's a jackal. Oh, oh man. Sure. Okay, so let's talk about let's talk about DC now for okay. a little bit. So we know Superman is strongest ever, basically, but there are a lot of people that are physically almost on par with Superman. Um, you know, Doomsday, obviously. He had a straight up, you know, fist to coast match with Superman and and didn't win, but didn't really lose either because he did technically kill him. Yeah. Um. But there's so see, there's so many villains in the DC universe that I feel are much more practical and pragmatic than are in the Marvel universe. Sure. But like, because like the Marvel universe always seems like you know they they get so grandiose in their overarching schemes that they're like, you know, it's all or nothing. You know, they're like, they either conquered the planet or, or, or like, you know, that the superheroes in question just throw a giant iron dildo through their plans. And it goes so wrong that, yeah. that it's, it's laughable. Um, there are very few villains in the Marvel universe that can really pull off like a really great plot. Like, I mean, like the only two that come to mind, uh, Doctor Doom and the Red Skull, and that's it. I mean, everybody else, it's like they rely on personal power to overcome. And th- the DCU has a lot of those, but there's like because mostly because of Batman, there's a lot of crossing villains mm-hmm. that interact with the majority of the Justice League that can really put into a to put into work a really long schemed plan that comes to fruition and uses a whole bunch of fucking people to achieve a very specific goal that you don't really realize as you're reading it that so much has happened to achieve that goal until it's done and and I just I mean just the writing to me for the DC comics is just just assholes and elbows ahead of Marvel in a lot of ways, yeah. especially uh, Jeff Johns is fantastic. The writer, um, he does a lot of Batman. He does a lot of Green Lantern. So, I mean, the some of the plot lines, like you know, Joker causing Batman or causing Superman to turn evil. You know, the Joker. He has no power. Right. He has nothing. He's just an. He's just a psycho babbling asshole, and he he broke the Man of Steel. Right. That's unbelievable, you know, but it, but, I mean, it's unbelievable, but it's believable because like they actually make it believable versus like, you know, like a lot of the X-Men villains that they're like, I'm going to bring a meteor down onto the planet. I mean, I haven't thought anything else past that, but <laughs> I'm going to bring a meteor down the planet, I guess. Well, that's the thing is like when you look at these villains, um, both on Marvel and DC, um, yeah. You look at the universe in general, and the rules that are laid out for the, for that specific universe, uh, like Marvel, like it is just out there. Like sh- any fucking thing can happen at any time. So you get these villains with unimaginable power. They don't need to resort to conning or conniving or anything like that. They're just like, oh, I'm gonna do the worst thing imaginable. I'm gonna blow up the Earth with my godlike powers. Mm-hmm. But you look at the DC villains, most of them are just normal people. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of them might have a little bit of ability, like Poison Ivy, for example, or something like that. But for the most part, they're just people. And mm-hmm. they have to use their wits to... And it's the superheroes that are stupid overpowered. Like Bruce Wayne, he's not exactly a superhero, but... He's the pinnacle of humanity. He's like... Best physical condition of anybody on the planet. Uh, has more money than God. <laughs> um, he's got. I mean, he's got eight master's degrees. He's yeah. a he's a master of every martial arts on the planet. Yeah. So the I mean, villains, he, he's unbelievable. <laughs> the villains kind of are at a disadvantage. Other Super than the, disadvantage. The, the only advantage they have, and they use this specific rule that fucking Bruce Wayne has put on to himself. I can't kill anybody. <laughs> You know, so yeah. because of that rule that he's put on himself, which, you know, the writers made it happen because he had to have a weakness. Like, 
Batman gets one life. All the <laughs> villains get infinite lives. So they could keep on trying, you know? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, and that's like... there. I think that the thing that I like the most about DC versus Marvel is that DC has taken so much more morality themes than marvel has marvel has been more flash boom bang and you know the, yeah. the big cosmic battle but like you know you're, you're right we like the the, Mar- the marvel villains seem to be like this incredible godlike power where like you have to have teams of heroes get together in order to defeat an individual sure. whereas like in like the dc universe you've got teams of unbelievably powered superheroes that have to get together because they can't figure out what the fuck the villains are doing. <laughs> yeah. And there are so many villains doing so many small things. And then the Legion of Doom only announces itself whenever there's literally nothing they can do to stop it, except for try to prevent the worst possible outcome. Right. And, and I think that that's fantastic. And then like, you know, what you don't really see a lot of, except for maybe Phoenix is, heroes going bad which is what you see a lot of in the dc universe right. where heroes were heroes until like they went too far like you know the green lantern uh becomes parallax and takes the yellow ring and then it just he loses his mind and then he destroys um i'm oh, sorry hal jordan uses the green the yellow ring he becomes parallax and then he destroys his home city and kills everybody in it yeah um so like you know he was attempting to do good and in order to try to do good he needed more power so he wanted to use the yellow ring but he couldn't control it so you know you have a case a a classic case of doing wrong in order to do right and it and it backfired you don't really see that in marvel and i think that that's really really missed (laughs) really missed i mean like you can't have some characters like i mean like you almost never see like a story where Batman's a bad guy. Batman has been like the 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 Dark Knight, the K N I G H T, f- forever. I mean, like there has never been a situation where Batman has ever been the villain, except for like alternate universe where he's Owlman or he is a literal bat, right. or he turns into Dracula, <laughs> which was weird. But then like like even in like the um, the Red Sun, where they uh, they wrote a story. It's a one shot where Superman, where like the the Earth rotated just a little faster than in the primary storyline. So rather than landing in Kansas, uh, Superman lands in Siberia. And so, but I mean, he landed in Siberia during the time when the USSR was still active. So Superman gets discovered by the Soviets, and he grows up under the literal watchful eye of Joseph Stalin, and he becomes, you know, Comrade Kal El. And he uses his power to pretty much make sure that the Soviets dominate Russia and that the Cold War doesn't really end. And then he goes over and he he basically kills Lex Luthor, who was the president of the United States. And they, from what I remember, I'm probably wrong, but they pretty much you know take over the U.S. And the only person who's left fighting him is is Batman. But you know, he there there are tons of Batman. It's not just Bruce Wayne. There are Batmen, like a whole bunch of them. And but he's still got that same that's that same mentality of being the good guy. Yeah. Except for like he tries to kill Superman. <laughs> that that there that being the difference. He um it was weird. They were Superman was using his heat vision to lobotomize the, the Batman and and they turned him into like menial slave labor. Oh god! And so, rather than being lobotomized, Bruce Wayne blows himself up in an effort to try to kill Superman. And Superman was just like, "Well, that was that was anticlimactic." <laughs> and but then it makes him, but it, then it makes him think, maybe I'm doing it all wrong. So then he just kind of fucks off, <laughs> and like it, it brings into the the idea. This is where the comic brought in the idea that Superman, because of his strength and the way that he absorbs the sunlight mm-hmm. um it's entirely possible that he's immortal and he it was it's so weird <laughs> so he literally just kind of hangs out on the planet until it comes full circle and he has lived for so long that the earth comes back to where it is in the primary storyline 
the you, the entire world has crumbled and rebuilt and everything is like it is the united states it's where it's supposed to be russia is where it's supposed to be cold war is over he's in metropolis and he knows millions of years of knowledge oh god and he starts the whole thing over again but being the man of steel from america not from soviets i'm like <laughs> and my what? eyes are bleeding and I'm like yeah, fucking what? <laughs> what? <laughs> um yeah. And and like okay, so 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 we covered we covered super we covered super villain or superheroes, you know, who's the strongest? Who is your favorite neutral or anti hero? Punisher. Punisher? Absolutely. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh I'm gonna go with Deathstroke. Okay. I have the biggest boner for Deathstroke. I just like, he's so, he is so fucking violent and he's old. (laughs) (laughs) I know it's so stupid, but he's old, but like that doesn't matter to him. And and it's so funny that he's always been kind of like really weighed down by the fact that he's never been able to kill Batman. And then the most recent Deathstroke comics, it was very it was so it was so deep dark nasty he he get he hasn't been working very much and so he his his contractors get him with a little team of of nerdlings there's three kids who want to start a little mercenary outfit because they're rich assholes and they think they can do it and they're like we're gonna assign these kids to you and he's like i work alone well but you you know you're kind of getting up there and he's <laughs> like i work alone <laughs> and, and like and then he's, they're like, well, just take him with you. And then so like they make this plan and then they're like, they, they want to do a little jump where he jumps out of a plane and then he lands in another plane. And then, you know, he's going to cut the wiring and they're going to do all this old stuff with the internet and whatever. And Deathstroke just kind of looks at him, puts the mask on, opens the bag, jumps out the back without a parachute, hits the plane, with, drags along the sword, rips the door open, kills everybody inside, takes the package, fires a gun, that latches onto the other plane, pulls himself back up, and then just throws the package to him. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he's so mad. <laughs> oh, he's so mad right now. And then they go back. This is this is my only story with Deathstroke, just to show you why I love this guy. They go back, and he's talking with his contact, and the kids are sitting there, and they're all cheering. Yay, we win! And, blah, blah, blah. and then Deathstroke's like, mission's complete. And then he says, what do you think about the team? He goes, oh, right. Turns around, machine guns all three of them. He just turns out, looks at him, hands the still smoking gun to the agent, and says, "I work alone." <laughs> I was like, "Oh, <laughs> they were just babies. He shouldn't have did that." <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> He's so not good. He's such a bad man. Oh man, no, I like he the is. Pun- <laughs> <laughs> I like the Punisher because, primarily, I mean, like, okay, that that. Those stills of a comic that you were talking about, um, the whole thing where he kills those villains and he gets mm-hmm. in a fight with uh, Captain America, that pretty much said it for me that he was my favorite anti-hero because of the fact that he really only kills the bad guys. He, you know, and there, like that's that's like Ben. That is the thing about the Punisher. You're right, and I love that so much. So much that, like, you know, he he is he's an avenger, not a murderer. And like the fact that he draws the distinction so hard, yeah, it, it is just ah, oh, it's just so good. Yeah, so I mean, good. if if you haven't watched season two of Daredevil yet, I strongly recommend it. Um, he's fighting with Daredevil, and Daredevil thinks he's gonna die. I mean, he's not afraid of death, but he thinks he's gonna die because the Punisher has killed so many people so far. And his friends are worried that he's going to die by the Punisher. Punisher never had any intention of killing Daredevil. Because Daredevil's a good guy. And he's never, you know, other than the fact that he's vigilante, he's never really broken the law or never really killed anybody himself. So the only thing that, you know, that bothers the Punisher about the Daredevil is that just getting in his fucking way <laughs> like to kill people yeah he's a he like he gives him that little love tap where he kind of like glances that shot off of his helmet like don't <laughs> yeah 
stop it <laughs> F- fuck off <laughs> like but yeah. i mean and at the same time he also sees a lot of himself in the daredevil he, he sees himself like before he had the bad day of his family dying mm-hmm. <laughs> so i mean he's trying to convince daredevil why he's doing what he did i mean like he's like he's like look i'm killing all these people because your stupid fucking judicial system sucks and they're just going to be back out in a couple weeks anyways. So put a bullet through their heads. Justice. Right there. <laughs> and, the you old know, yeller justice. The old yeah, They're <laughs> foaming at the mouth. you got to put them down. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, Daredevil wants to do it the long ass way. And Punisher basically says, look, one of these days, you're going to be like me. Maybe not now. Maybe not in two weeks. But <laughs> people are going to die under your watch and you're gonna lose your shit and when that happens welcome to the club <laughs> it's like the joker says all it takes is one bad day yeah I'll talk about i i love the punisher if you haven't had the chance i mean i know it's not canon but i mean i know that there have been there has been at least one comic where one comic and one movie where the punisher has by my not means of his own killed an innocent um if you ever get a chance to watch it, i think it's on netflix where it's punisher and widowmaker um he gets mind controlled and he kills a couple of uh, shield guards and once he breaks the mind control uh he realizes that he's killed him he drops literally all of his guns and he turns himself in and he's like just kill me he says he, he, the one thing that he would never do, and he said he did it, and everyone's like, "But it wasn't you." And he says, "It was me." <laughs> he says, "Just kill me," and he try. I mean, he just he legit just gives up on life like that. I mean, he broke his one rule, and he just he couldn't deal with it. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if that says I don't know if that means he's got a strong character or he's <laughs> kind of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, like you know, like look at all the good you did. <laughs> I mean, like so so. I mean, okay, look, you're not Superman, you know. Yeah. You're not Superman. Superman is not allowed to kill. You kill as an occupation. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, you look, bullets don't stop at the guy. They could keep going. Yeah. You know, little Jose down the street could get clapped right in the mush. You don't know. <laughs> Just because you, you didn't see it happen. Like, <laughs> Yeah. Like, what if you blew up a building and some... some guy was walking by and he had paper shoes on. He cut his fucking foot, got tetanus and died. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. <laughs> if you hadn't blown up that building. <laughs> I. Oh, man. I mean, like, there there are times when the Punisher does shit that, like, I think it's I think it's definitely an American thing because, like, it it's so visceral and it's like it's in it's in it's in our streets. You know, you see, like, these criminals, like, you know dragged a kid off here shot up a bank here and you see it in the news and then like you read a punisher comic and like you got like a gang of hoodlums that like you know they're they're they just got done you know uh beating the shit out of a homeless guy and then here's the punisher (laughs) just shreds them all i mean like you know doesn't talk to them no miranda nothing knows their guilt kills them all like the scythe of god himself And it's just, it's very gratifying. It is. Every Punisher comic is gratifying. The one weakness of the Punisher comics, he has no he has no nemesis because he kills everyone. <laughs> the only one that's close to Kingpin, kinda, and Jigsaw, who I'm pretty sure is dead now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's not a nemesis anymore. Uh, one of the things that in the season two of Daredevil that they were talking about once, uh, once they caught their not Daredevil. Once they caught Punisher, and he was, you know, he didn't exactly resist or anything. He he went he went to jail, but uh, you know they were trying. To, uh, what's his name? What's Daredevil's actual name? Matt Murdock. Yeah, Matt Murdock. Him and uh, his uh, and Foggy. They were trying to, you know, spin the story to where he was actually kind of crazy, so he wouldn't go to jail. They were trying to win the case for him. Obviously, that's their job. Mm-hmm. And uh, the redheaded chick from True Blood, um, 
he she tries to spin it like he has PTSD. And he's like, yeah, you're not going to do that. Like, well, it's a good defense. And he's like, it's an insult to people that actually have PTSD. I don't have PTSD. I'm fucking killing people <laughs> because yeah. they need to be killed. <laughs> so, I mean, that that line alone, I just it was so good. I mean, everything about him is 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 amazing and so far other than other than his appearance in Daredevil it's been pretty disappointing on screen there there was a line in a in a comic similar where he gets arrested and then Matt Murdock um is going to be his defense and uh he's present during uh, an interrogation that the police are doing and he they're like what went down at that warehouse? How many people did you kill down there? And the Punisher just shrugs and says, I don't know, there were a lot of explosions. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, he's not even a little sad. <laughs> that was so good. I was like, oh, my God, that line. Oh. I thought, as, as far as like the his on-screen appearances go, beyond, beyond season two of Daredevil, I mean, even then, I was kind of, eh, because, like, you know, he played it really well, but but he wasn't violent enough, and he wasn't. Um, this is gonna sound stupid. He wasn't proficient enough. Where like you know he struggled a lot more than I think that he really should have. Okay. I think it's because they portray Daredevil in the first season and in the majority of well both seasons really uh, of not really. I mean, like, he can fight, but not well. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why they did that. Uh, I don't really appreciate that, because, like, e- even, like, at the beginning of Daredevil's career, he was pretty fucking live. You know, I mean, like, he, he was taking on whole groups of guys with relative ease. Yeah. Um, then then you had the Punisher, who was, like, a soldier for life. You know, I mean, he like all he knew was war. He was a special forces guy. and He did like all of these like not not just like he didn't just have a tour of duty. He had like a fucking rap sheet of people that he's off. Yeah. And like then in this and then in this, you know, I understand he had the tussle with Daredevil. But then it was like he was having so much difficulty in, in every one of the engagements that I was kind of like. I don't know. You know, I'm just like, I feel like. He's getting hurt a lot more than I think that he should be. I mean, like at this point, we already built the mythos that that Daredevil's thing is that for whatever reason he has extra ligaments in his skull that make it so his brain doesn't come unglued. Right. You know. I mean, like <laughs> I, I don't know why, but his head's full of stuffing and he just takes it and he lives and fucking I don't know why. Um, but then like the Punisher, like he's getting the like he's getting the jumping Jesus Christ beaten out of him, and I'm kind of like, I I don't know. You're kind of getting kind of Mr. Dumpling-y on me. I don't know why you're not really that great. I do uh, have to disagree with you on that one, primarily because, yeah, he, I mean, before he even, like, appears on screen, he fucking lays to waste an entire bar full of gang members. I didn't know he was there. I know, but then... <laughs> I mean, if you stand outside of a closed door with an M60, yeah, you'll kill everyone in the fucking room. But then, okay, so then he gets in a fight after that with Daredevil. And it's a fight. I mean, Daredevil knows how to fucking fight. So, I mean, he's, yeah, okay, so that happens. And then eventually after that, now he fights Daredevil again, and then he gets put in a prison. And uh, Fisk throws a bunch of uh, guys at him. Basically ambushes him. I don't think I've gotten that. I haven't finished second season. Okay, well, he, it's probably about 13 different guys. He murders all of them with a fucking prison shank. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. I have to see that. Then. It's a I mean, I just, I guess, like then, like you know, he redeems himself further on. But like, you know, it just seemed to me like in the in the first half of what I, because I've literally seen up to the part where he gets arrested. Yeah, it seems to me that like, it just seemed to me like he was struggling a lot more than I I felt like he should have. But maybe it's because like I have like a, my own person personal mythos that's yeah. been built up for the Punisher, where he's like, because you know, comic books, he's basically like an unflinching killing machine, where he virtually never has a problem right i mean like okay so then there's that scene and there's a scene shortly after that where he's being tortured because he he got ambushed and somebody came up right behind him and injected him full of uh something that put him to sleep then they strapped him to a chair and fucking drilled a hole through his foot (laughs) oh yeah i saw that 
Okay. Yeah, that's... He still gets up and murders everybody in the room. I mean... <laughs> I guess. I guess you're probably right. I guess I had to rewatch it. It just seemed... Like I said, it just seemed to me like, you know, he was having a lot more um, difficulties than I thought he should. Mm, but at the same time, you know, they they want it to be closer to being real, I guess. Sure. Sometimes I don't want that. Mm-hmm. You know, I just want... I want it to be a comic book show. Well, I mean, yeah, and that and that's like the... That's the difference between the two Punisher movies. I mean, you got... Well, there's three, but Thomas Jane and what's his face? <laughs> we don't talk about Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't happen. Uh, then what's his face? I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, Warzone guy. Yeah, Ray Stevenson. Yeah, that's one. It's like you look at one movie. Uh, you know, his entire extended family dies, and he's a really good, you know, soldier, and he gets his ass kicked a lot in that movie. Yeah. And then you look at the Ray Stevenson movie. He just fucking blows everybody up in the most extravagant way. Comic I book loved style. that movie. Okay. So I love that movie. That is two different sides of the same coin. I mean, one's very comic bookish and the other one's more realistic. That's my thing. It's like I don't really I I don't I don't dislike because, like, you know, I guess it goes back to, like, the gratification of, like, you know, you see crimes being committed and, like, you want to go Punisher style on them. Mm-hmm. And so you want that unerring avenging angel like the Punisher that just, like, you know, blah, 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 and just waste everyone in the room that's, like, ever held a gr- grudge against your grandma. You know, <laughs> it's it just that that's what I loved. About. He he shoots a guy who's doing a cop word jumping across a building with a fucking rocket launcher. I know, I saw it. He just fucking blows That's what I want in my movie! <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so... <laughs> full disclosure, I haven't seen all of Warzone. But it I did see so that good. I did see that scene. And it's funny, because it's like this, these three guys doing parkour, and it seems like, like a... It's got really upbeat music, too. And it seems like, you know, it's just like a start of a music video. Then all of a sudden, out of fucking nowhere, this guy just blows to pieces. <laughs> And it's, and it's just the Punisher shooting a rocket launcher at these guys doing parkour. <laughs> the preceding, like, 15, 20 seconds of that was showing an old lady at a cash register that they had just, like, hit in the head with a machete. Oh, did not know that. <laughs> yeah, so, like, then the Punisher, like, he, he shoots the one guy with a rocket launcher, kills, obviously, and then he grabs the other guy, and he interrogates him, and, you know, Punisher style. I can't remember if he broke bones or whatever. But then he's like, are you going to let me go? And he literally impales him on a on a churchyard wall. Like, with where, like they got the, the spikes right. for the, the gate. He just impales him on him. <laughs> I'm like, I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> Dude, in the opening 30 seconds of the movie, he decapitates an old woman with a bowie knife. <laughs> <laughs> it was everything I wanted. They're sitting at dinner and Nana's head goes fucking rolling down near the gravy. It was wonderful. <laughs> and he just stands up and just kills everyone. I'm just... <sighs> <laughs> it was the best. So good. A little, you know, old guy, and he's got the little, he's got the rascal at the oxygen tank and he's just... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wins. <laughs> It's so good. I mean, everything about that movie was it was like like you're watching the movie and you're doing this because you just assume that it's the comic book because it's basically that's what it is. <laughs> you know, there's very little dialogue from him. There's just a lot of <laughs> 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 like he pick- literally goes into a building. <laughs> In the end of this movie, it is full of guys. There are thugs in every. I mean, it's like it's like. If you're playing with Call, if you're playing Call of Duty with people on 56k, because like you have you have cable, everyone else has 56k. Because like he he just like he goes into this hallway, he, he goes so that you can he can hear like a lot better, and then for some reason that gives him like an accurate guess on where everyone is. <laughs> he goes to every door, kicks it in, kills all the guys here, and then goes to the next door, kicks it in, kills everyone there, and no one comes into the hallway. <laughs> No one comes to find out. It's like they all just hope that he does, he's just going to walk by. He's that spooky guy. And then, like, at one point, they all try to hide, like, the, the, like four doors down. They decide to get smart, and they don't stand in front of the door anymore, so they go to both sides. So he shoots a hole in the door, and he fires a fucking rocket in there and blows the whole fucking thing up. 
but the door that he's standing in front of is fine. <laughs> <laughs> he throws a grenade in there, and he comes out fine. No shrapnel, no nothing. I mean, like, oh, God. Oh, God, it was so stupid. But it was so good. And it was so fucking violent. That was what the Thomas Jane one missed. Like, the Thomas Jane one, was it a PG-13? I don't think it was an art, yeah, was it? it was P- not, well, no, I don't not, think it was. I have to look it up because there was a lot of cursing and there was actually nudity in it. I don't remember. I only watched it the one time because it was terrible. Oh, man, I love it so much. I know you do. I don't understand you sometimes. How are we friends? It's rated R. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. it wasn't a good rated R. They didn't earn that rated R very well. Yeah, I mean, they, they could have done a lot more. They should have done a lot I'm more. I'm not even but... talking with, like, you know, the, the gore part of it i'm talking they had a blank check to do whatever they wanted with a rated r basically right and they toned it way down it, it was very it was very weak for yeah. what it was so my, my dad asked me this uh, a couple months ago he asked me he says son i don't know why it's british <laughs> who do you think would win in a fight black widow or the punisher i think mm. punisher would win I think it would be a pretty close fight. I think it would be too, but I still think Punisher would win. I think so, too. And the reason being... Uh, what is your reasoning? My reason being is... Uh, he's... He's more... I think he's more uh, skilled in hand-to-hand combat than she would be because he's more of a secret agent, kind of infiltrate, espionage kind of thing and silently kill somebody but if you're already engaged in a fight like one-on-one fight you kind of lose the whole element of surprise thing so mm-hmm. then you have to you have to work on cqc <laughs> close quarter combat and uh this, these kind of phrases curl my mustache <laughs> uh at that point i think the punisher will win because he's way better at that he, he doesn't care about stealth <laughs> so right so he's more attuned to just bashing people, um, guns a blazing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I I actually uh, that's actually pretty much my reasoning too. Is that like you know I think that you know even though I think that she's very fast and she's very agile and she's got a lot of skills, he has more experience. Yeah, like all his fighting experience is born on the battlefield, not in a training room. And even though like you know she's seen her fair share and even more than her fair share of of fighting it's not on the same level and not in the same not in the same mud and the same shit that the punisher has where like you know she'll fight like a few guys but like you said she she gets the drop on them mm-hmm. or like you know she she's got you know the the technological advantage whereas the punisher has like the strength the will and just like the battlefield experience where i just i just think that like it's made him almost like an unstoppable fighting force like as far as like an actual human is concerned right i mean he's not captain america <laughs> but you know captain america is also barely even human anymore right so, i mean like what's a super soldier serum so yeah i mean that goes along the same lines as uh i don't know if you saw the the death match between spider-man and batman yeah i did um, um batman couldn't get the jump on him yeah that's basically i mean Batman would have won if Spider-Man didn't have spider sense. Right. I mean, because, you know, especially like in the case of, you know, Batman, even though like Batman, again, is the, is the pinnacle of, of human physical conditioning, Spider-Man has the 10 times the strength. Yeah. So, I mean, like, even if he, Batman did manage to get the drop on him and got a few good shots in, Spider-Man is so much physically stronger that he wouldn't stand a chance. I mean, um, Bane wouldn't even be able to fight Superman or Spider-Man. Bane would be torn limb from limb as well. Sure. I mean, there's just he physically couldn't do it. I mean, like the the venom makes you strong, but it ain't gonna make you that strong. Yeah, it'd probably make you what twice as strong. <laughs> not, I mean, probably. I mean, times. like twice as strong as twice as strong as somebody who's like 300 pounds could be. Right. So I mean, like if basically like if you had the strength of a gorilla. Yeah. But I mean, Spider-Man is still going to beat you down. Right. I mean, he's still too strong, too fast, and. You know, in Batman's disfavor, the the spider sense, so you could never sneak up on him. 
Yeah, exactly. Just couldn't happen. I mean, that's and that's unfortunate. <laughs> I mean, like in that particular context of the death battle, they say you know it's no preparation, just going in on it. And the problem with those two is that both Spider-Man and, and Batman, um, Batman and Spider-Man both do a substantial amount of preparation before any major engagement with someone who's stronger than they are. Right. So like, bat- if it, if it had been like you know even give him like an hour. <laughs> You know, the, the the results may have been vastly different. Yeah. But I, I love stuff like that. No, I, the whole the whole death battle channel. Oh, man. I spent hours on that shit. It's so good. I've also spent hours yelling at it. I mean, I disagree with a lot of it, but I appreciate that somebody uh, or a group of somebody's have put that together. Man, Sometimes I'm, I'm like, like I, look at the, I look at the combinations and I go, it's not really fair. You know, like what? Like Darth Vader versus Doctor Doom. It's not really a yeah, that's a fair com. It's not really a fair combination. Yeah, that's Doctor Doom's ridiculous. obviously gonna win. Yeah, no, that's, I, that's. I knew that before it even started. They're like, you know, Doctor Doom versus Darth Vader, and I'm like, it's not a fight. Darth Vader's gonna get squished. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the one. Um, what was it? Deadpool versus uh, Raiden. Have you seen that? Yeah. One? Uh riding like Metal Gear Raiden? Yeah. I don't think I have. Yeah. I mean I know Raiden doesn't win. Well, yeah, because he doesn't have healing. Yeah, I mean that's a that's the thing that's that's the bullshit thing about Deadpool. Is that like, you know, they did the one Deadpool versus Deathstroke mm-hmm. because Deadpool is a cheap version of Deathstroke. Yeah. He's a ripoff. Marvel's ripoff of Deathstroke. Sure. And uh don't you patronize me? He is. <laughs> <laughs> look, they look the same in hit Wade Wilson, Slade Wilson. Suck my dick. Anyway, <laughs> so and so, but you know, as far as like actual power is concerned, Deathstroke's faster, stronger, has a te- has a tactical reflexes, has a tactical knowledge, has the experience. He literally shits all over Deadpool, but he doesn't have the same level of because Deathstroke has regeneration, but he doesn't have Deadpool's level of regeneration right. where like Deadpool has been known to be torn in half and then jump onto a guy and smother the guy with his own organs <laughs> and then reattach himself. Yeah. You know, to his lower body. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, you could literally damn near atomize Deadpool and he'll come back. Yeah. So, I mean, like, no, he's not going to win. I mean, like he, he could fight him forever, and he could get you know repeated killing blows, and it wouldn't make any difference. So I mean, that's 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 another one of those ones where it's like that's not really fair. True. I mean, well then at that point, Wolverine or Deadpool, because they have the same power pretty much. Nobody can stand up to him because over time, eventually, they will win. Yeah, I mean, like you could, you know, like like with Wolverine. I mean, like you could basically half melt him like repeatedly. Yeah. And, you know, unless you completely destroy him, like down to the atom, because his his regeneration isn't as virulent as Deadpool's, not even by half. Oh, really? I mean, but it's still really strong. Yeah. Well, like I said, Deadpool has been literally torn in half and he continued to live. Okay. Wolverine, if you tear him in half, he will die. But, you know, Deadpool, for whatever reason, can't. <laughs> that I cannot understand. But so, like, unless you turn um, unless you completely annihilate deadpool like you, you, i mean you'd have to completely annihilate deadpool and then separate all the parts and then that's the only way that you could probably remove him you probably couldn't even kill him you would just have to remove him i mean you, you there's just i don't know i don't know how you would do it i mean other than like other than like like infinity stone level complete annihilation you know what i'm saying i don't even think that'll do it i mean like you would have to scatter him to the wind that is the only, I mean, like, and even then he'll probably eventually come back, which is just annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, like, again, putting him in a fight with anyone would be, because, like, you could put Deadpool versus Galactus, and he would probably still win, just because Galactus would be like, fuck, I am so hungry. <laughs> and Deadpool's just like, pop, 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 cut, 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 cut. <laughs> and then eventually, like, Galactus will just starve to death. <laughs> yeah. You know, he couldn't leave because he's been fighting Deadpool, and then he just starved out. Or eventually he fell asleep and then Deadpool crawled inside of his neck and just started cutting away or whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't know. 
they had one where it was Deadpool versus Batman and Batman won. But the objective wasn't killing each other. It was secure. I think it was Catwoman. He had to save Catwoman or something. Uh-huh. And so like he Batman brings in the, the Batmobile and uh, Deadpool's like, you know, that's not going to kill me. And Batman looks and he goes, I'm counting on it. And he blows Deadpool in half oh, <laughs> with uh, one yeah. of the grenades. Oh, dude, I was I was laughing super hard. It was good. Yeah, that one was good. Showed, mm. showed some booty. Yeah. Then um, oh, they did the Deadpool and Deadpool and Domino versus Harley and the Joker. Mm-hmm. And I mean, again, Deadpool. So you knew you knew Harley and the Joker were going to win, right? I mean, which I don't. Know, I think that's again. I think that kind of shit's stupid. I think anytime like anytime somebody is like, oh, I bet Deadpool could win, and I'm like, yeah, over a course of time. Yeah. All right, I well, mean, what's the time frame here? What's the objective? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, if I mean, if you want to put it in that context, Deadpool could kill the th- kill the Hulk. Eventually. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, eventually he's going to turn back into Bruce Banner. Yeah. And then he'll kill Bruce Banner. <laughs> or oh. eventually, the Hulk will just die of old age. <laughs> yep. You know what I mean? And then Deadpool will win. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I. I hate Deadpool. I mean, I love the movie, but I really hate the character just because, like, now that people are aware of him, he's become like the gold standard for people to say, "I, I know, I know comic books. I like Deadpool," and it just makes me want to fucking fight him. <laughs> yeah, it does. It's just like you know, like, oh, I love comic books. Like, oh, oh yeah, what do you, what do you like to read? Oh man, I really like Deadpool. Get out. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You have the re- you have the reading capacity of a third of a third grader. See, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I like comic books because I don't. But I do have some comics. I do appreciate the stories that come from the comic books. But I'm not going to sit here and say I'm a comic book buff. I mean, that would require reading and I don't like to read. I'm not a comic book buff. You're a fucking liar. (laughs) (laughs) I've been to your house. You have... so many comic books. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Like those are the ones that are in that house. Bookshelves upon bookshelves. Yeah, I I am a I am really big into comics. <laughs> <laughs> I I I definitely enjoy them. Man, uh, have you ever? Oh, never mind. I was gonna see if you'd ever read something. I'm forgetting who I'm talking to. <laughs> <laughs> I probably no, read a I synopsis on whatever you're about to ask. Huh? I, I might have read a synopsis on whatever you're about to ask. Did you ever read Black as Night? No. Oh. Well, Black as Night is uh, a standalone series of comics of about, I was going to say obviously the Green Lantern, but it's about the Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. And it's about the combination of the Green Lantern core where the the Black Lantern um, arrives. And it's after... It's after Batman has been killed and uh, the bearer of the Black Lantern uh, creates rings that revive dead heroes in the DC universe. Okay. And then it's basically zombie heroes, but not like in the that goofy ass Marvel zombies stupid thing where the Punisher kills the, the Marvel universe. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I have questions about that. <laughs> I, mm, I wonder about that one. Uh, but like they, they revive Batman, Hawkgirl, Hawkman, and then all these other heroes start to kill other heroes until like the, the Lantern Corps unite and then bring down the, the Black Lantern. It was really good. It was very distressing because there were a lot of heroes that get killed and particularly not in good ways. Um, Hawker gets eaten. Nice. Yeah. It's kind of sexy. <laughs> I don't know. Something, something about a, something about a girl with wings getting her throat torn out. It just gets me. <laughs> Please don't come to my house and shoot me. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was good. If I mean, like, I know. But if you ever happen to have the opportunity to read it, I would say read it. Or Fear Itself. Fear Itself from, from the Marvel Universe is also very good. 
That's a, also a different series of comics about the end of the world. Where Ragnarok becomes a real thing. Becomes a real thing as in? Um, the serpent begins to gain power, and the serpent is sort of like a, an astral being that can destroy all the nine realms. And it's going to gain its power by um, essentially eating humans. And in order to prevent this, Odin declares that Midgard needs to be destroyed. And he sends, uh, he imbues four superheroes uh, with the powers of essentially the four horsemen, Mm -hmm. but the Norse version. Uh, It's Namor, She-Hulk, The Thing, and... uh, Oh God, I can't remember the last one. I think it's um, I think it's the Red Skull's daughter, and uh, they are set to destroy humanity. That's gonna be their job. So you have the Thing and Spider Man were hanging out, and then the Thing becomes awesome because he turns black and he's got all these like red runes in his body and he's got a giant fucking war mall. And I was like, he looks so cool. <laughs> and then he proceeds to level New York. And then so Spider-Man has to fight him. Um, she Hulk gets the same thing, gets a giant war hammer and she fights Captain America and kills him straight up kills him. I think Spider-Man dies too. I think Spider-Man dies fighting the thing. Um, but then Thor is has his hammer taken away and he's forced to stay in Asgard because uh, he doesn't Odin doesn't want him to get involved. Yeah. But he manages to break out, takes the hammer, defeats the the four evil ones. I'm just some spoil the whole damn thing. I guess you don't even need to read it now. <laughs> and then, so, right? Yeah, because I guess like I just gave up on on you trying, on, trying to talk you into reading something. Tell and me then, stories, Frank. Yeah, <laughs> stay a while and listen. <laughs> um. <laughs> so then he, so he, he the, they defeat the four the four horsemen, and then uh, Thor fights the serpent, and in keeping with Norse mythology, he kills the serpent, but he dies doing it. Yeah, and then he's immortalized in Asgard and Midgard as being the protector of humanity. And everyone just kind of glazes over the fact that Odin tried to literally exterminate the human race. No big deal. Yeah. Although Tony Stark does, start, Tony Stark does call him a giant asshole though. Oh, that'll tell him. <laughs> well, I mean, what else are you going to do? He's a fucking God. Like, and in the, and in this timeline, Tony Stark's so blown out that he doesn't really matter. He's like, he's drunk as shit. But it was cool because he got to stand there in the center of a dead star uh, with a bunch of dwarves that built that hammered out Mjolnir to yeah. make Thor a new weapon. So Tony Stark gets to help the dwarves that made Mjolnir make weapons. That's pretty cool. With the same material. So that, that super condensed star. It's pretty awesome. That sounds pretty awesome. Well, thanks for watching slash listening, everybody. If you like what you heard or seen, please uh, rank, comment, subscribe. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. If you're listening to this on your smartphone, feel free to check out our YouTube channel as well. We'll have another podcast out pretty soon. But until then, we'll see you later. Bye. Peace out, old dealer. (laughs) Ha ha ha.